About eight years ago, two of my friends in middle school made a YouTube channel and started uploading gaming videos, mostly Minecraft. The fact that I owned a Minecraft server at the time connected us during a conversation in school, and they invited me to join them for one of their videos. Um, put a sign with... Hey Mark, do you have food by chance? Do I have what? Any food? Maybe since he's the owner, he may have food, but... Just, just maybe, just maybe. Just maybe. I don't, I didn't just... Not long after, I became a part of the channel. At the end of high school, about seven years later, I ended up saying goodbye to the channel. I was going off to university and didn't think I was going to be able to make time for gaming content, but I knew I wanted to keep editing videos, so- oh, no. after being I don't know if I'm gonna be able to upload and record, which stinks, because I really enjoyed doing it. This channel has helped me a lot with stuff. From beginning to now, it really did help in me learning how to talk. Um, both myself, it taught me how to edit videos. Dude, I learned how to use Trello. So after being inspired by others, such as John Fish and Devin Crawford, I decided to make some student life vlogs on this very channel. Then two years later, so this past summer of 2020, the emergence of COVID meant that I couldn't work over the summer because the camp I was working at couldn't run. Staying with my mom, I focused on getting some of my skills worked on and one of those things meant weekly YouTube videos on this channel. Of those videos, one of them happened to be about how I learned to type at 100 65 words per minute. About a month and a half after a slight change in the video title, the video spiked and I surpassed about a thousand subscribers in a bit under two weeks. As of writing this video, we are just past 1200 subscribers and that typing video has hit over a hundred thousand views. That's weird to say. I'm blatantly reading off the script here because I had a lot to say and I didn't want to ramble too much. But anyway, with the spirit of American Thanksgiving in the air and considering that we're all you know grateful for things in our lives, taking this time out of the year to think about those things. I wanted to make a video on it and it felt right to start off by saying thank you for a thousand subscribers. Thank you for over a hundred thousand views on that video. And especially thank you to those who leave comments and those who are saying, oh wow, you only have like hundreds of subscribers or those who say I'm gonna blow up or those who just say the good content, man, keep it up. It goes a long way and I try to respond to nearly every comment because after doing this for eight years, getting comments and feedback from people is the part I love the most. That being said, uh, I encourage you to look back on what has occurred in your life to get you to where you are now. Real quick, I wanna say a huge shout out to people who will probably never see this, but Storm of Blocks, Prismarine, Hestia, KCL, and other communities, just thank you guys for being such a big part of my life when I needed you the most. The addition that you are to my identity, uh, that wasn't the right wording, but we'll go with it. And to the people who I've met in classes and still talk to you from time to time, you're few in number, but I appreciate you. And without those people, without finding friends in my classes, I would likely not be graduating early, which again, is something I'm super grateful for. I could go on for things relating to family and other matters, but I do make a video for myself every year that remains private about all the things I'm grateful for. So. While those stay private, I found that I was uh, all the things I was saying had to do with the good old day moments, the things that have had the largest impact on my life today, but in the moment, I would never have guessed the things they would lead to. For example, had I not started making those Minecraft YouTube videos, I would not have had the skill set to place at a state's level of a competition for a documentary video I made on Charles Darwin. The things I've learned in Premiere and Photoshop from making YouTube videos have allowed me to do some freelance editing and create projects in a visual media for example, my psych final this year is a video project and I'm planning on going all out and making a crash course kind of lookalike or crash course inspired video. Hello, Ketzel. Had I not started that Minecraft server that I just made for fun of it because I wanted to play with some friends, I would likely have never experimented with coding plugins and working in Blender 3D. I've made some of the best friends of my life through that game and I'm still in touch with a few of them and I am eternally grateful for them. Sorry, my, my cat is here and I'm, I'm thankful for you, Ketzel. On a broader scale, I learned Java to make mini games and the next thing you know, I'm a comp sci major. In terms of my second major, I had every intention on declaring it as psychology, but the form said psychology, linguistics, and language of mind. I asked the person at the desk, what's language of mind? She told me it was a psychology, linguistics, and philosophy three-way split pretty much, and I circled it. Took a language one class, and now I'm looking forward to a class called grammatical analysis, which if you told me I'd be looking forward to two years ago, I would have laughed. Anyway, I'm also preparing an undergraduate research proposal for second language acquisition, and it's just these, these very seemingly inconsequential things things, the circle on a form that change the course of our lives and we don't know it until it's too late. These seemingly inconsequential things that happen around us can have the greatest impact on who we are in the future. Changing from psychology to language and mind has led me to discover that I love linguistics. I never would have guessed, but if you get me talking about language, I will keep going and that's how I know I'm passionate about it. Thing is, it's nearly impossible to recognize the good times when we're in them. The whole message I got out of 
thinking about this these past few weeks is that instead of waiting for someone to say, hey, you're in the good old days or looking back in a few years and saying, dang, those were the good old days. Don't find the good old days, make the good old days. We can seek to always be in those moments so that when we find ourselves smiling, laughing, wishing the moment would never end, we can try and make ourselves more present in the moment. Cast yourself forward to a future with this moment having been passed and then come back again so you can really appreciate the now that is happening in front of you. Many small things happened in the six months of my fall 2019 semester and more changed in those six months than anything from the previous four years. What small things in your past have changed where you are now and what's happening now that could change where you are tomorrow? An unhappiness in the pace of your high school French class taught you to seek out Duolingo and learning languages on your own that led to a love of linguistics. You make a Minecraft server and you make some of the best friends of your life. <laughs> Shopping at Walmart one summer, you bump into someone from a brief moment in your past, but just dare I call it a coincidence, you bump into them and it ends up being the butterfly flapping its wings that leads to this six month hurricane of change. Whatever it might be, small or large, forget about the existence of hindsight bias for just a moment and look back on these pivotal moments of life. Then maybe cast yourself into the future and looking back now, what can you change in the world around you right now? So what are the things in the past that have led to who you are now? What are the things that are happening right now, the classes you're taking? What kinds of things can you do right now so that in the future, it's not an inaction you will regret? If you're willing, drop a comment down below, be vulnerable, and then come back in the future to this video and see what kinds of things you acknowledge now. You never know what you say now that future you will appreciate beyond measure. I had no expectations to hit a thousand subscribers when I started making the videos more seriously over the summer and all of a sudden after eight years, I'm finally at this goal that I've always wanted to hit. I am more grateful for that decision to focus on videos than I was when I made that decision. Hydration check. In the event that you're wearing the same pair of shoes that I was wearing about a year and a half ago, what things can you change in the world around you to rise up beyond the, the darkness of your current environment? The good old days are in the past, but the future has potential for you to make more good old days. What small things can you change and what can you see happen in front of you? The small things that feel insignificant today, that feel insignificant in the moment, can have the biggest impacts in the future. Make your own butterfly effects. Anyway, thanks for watching and or listening to this monotonous train of thought while I read off the script. I'd love to hear if you like these more thoughtful or philosophical type of videos. I'll definitely not read off the script as much. I just wanted to keep this one as concise as possible, at least as concise as I can be. And let me know what you got from it. Let me know what your good old days were and what good old days you want to make. We'll be back to some productivity and typing content next week. Ooh, we got some good stuff coming up. Anyway, I will see you then. And of course, don't forget to stay awesome.